Talk Show. Recorded Ladies live. and gentlemen, the President of the United States in an interview in 2008. Mr. President, final question. Yes, sir. You said famously, when you looked into Vladimir Putin's eyes, you saw his soul. Yeah. When you look into Benedict XVI's eyes, what do you see? God. When you look into Benedict XVI's eyes, what do you see? God. And welcome to another broadcast on Hour of the Truth. We have today, Sunday, June 21st, 2015. And even though that I heard this quote already numerous times, I thought it was a nice idea to start the broadcast tonight, to which I welcome you all on Hour of the Truth, because we were talking today about the God of the... United States of America's president is coming later on this year in September to the United States. And normally, you know, the president speaks on behalf of his people or he speaks for his people. So when George W. Bush said that he says that he sees God in the eyes of Pope Benedict XVI, is that what he is speaking on behalf of himself or is that what he is speaking on behalf of a whole nation that he represents? That was an official interview. You have to see the importance of this. And of course, many of protestants now start to laugh and see, yeah, look what God that he sees in in his eyes, and don't even understand, often of the times, that the God that he sees is the king of this earth for the moment. Satan, that is his God that he sees. But before we go further into that, I first want to introduce my good friend and brother in Christ over there in Oregon on the south coast on Western America, Walt Stickel from Grand Design Disposed, who came up with the idea to do this broadcast tonight, because we were going into an article from the Economic Collapse website that we talked about, and Walt will only give you a little introduction into how this evening for me and morning for him over there in the United States now is planned, and we'll run a little bit. Welcome to the, bro- to, to the broadcast, Walt. Uh, thanks, York. Yes, uh, this is live from the southern part of Oregon on the shores of Romerica. And anyway, the other day, uh, I had a email sent to me, and uh, it comes off the title. You, you might post that. I don't have it right here. That's on my other computer. So you might post that in the in, in the in the chat box there, chat or York and. So anyway, this, this the article. This what interests me about this article, which what I think is really profound. We we don't see any true journalism, but this man that that's writing on this page, the economic collapse. And let me see, his name is Michael Snyder, and he, and he wrote this on May 11. He he is not talking from a, a religious point of view. He's talking from the point of view of a journalist, giving us the facts and let us put the pieces together. And so the title, uh, the title of this is, In September, the UN launches a major sustainable development agenda for the entire planet. And uh, before we get into the article, Tell me if I'm wrong, if I could say it this way, uh, York. Could I say it like this? The article could read, in September, the UN launches a major sustainable development agenda for the New World Order. That would be correct. That would be correct. Because the entire, the United Nations, the entire, you know. And so with with that, let's, York's going to, going to read this article, and uh, if I have a comment or something, I'll, I'll, make, I'll say comment, but uh, I, I think this, uh, this article is very well read, and especially anybody that's uh, the children of God, and to fully understand anymore, I'm not bashful on a, on a broadcast. If you're not reading the Bible, you're not going to be understanding what's going on. But the Bible tells us the beginning to the end. And let me give you a little example. I went downtown. We have a farmer's market. And I went to the farmer's market on Friday. And there's a fellow in there that sells pollen. 
And by the way, he sells pollen. He traps pollen. I was a beekeeper once myself. But he, uh, after it cleans it, he puts it in a freezer. So if you're buying any pollen out of a health store and it's not refrigerated, being refrigerated is fine, but uh, freezing it is much better. And so anyway, if anybody's interested, he ships, he does ship it around the United States. So uh, he was selling pollen. And I, I know the man has is, is got a, he, I've talked to him before and I knew he had a Christian viewpoint, worldview, and he was Christian. So I asked him, I said, say, say Ed, what do you think of the Pope's visit in September of 2015? And he quickly says, uh, I, I, I didn't know he was going to speak. But he said, I know all about the Pope. He said, he said, and there is going to be a new world order. It is written. See, see and he said, we shouldn't be surprised. In other words, and, and, and the next comment he made is he said, uh, now that we know, he said, it's going to be interesting for us to sit back and watch how this plays out. Because God's word has given us an outline and a pre pretty much how it's going to play out. But we're not here tonight on this broadcast trying to give out information to stop this. And all we got to do, if we, if we tell enough people, you know, and if we yell globalists enough, globalists, it's the elitist, it's the elitist, it's globalist. It's the Jews. If we, if we yell this continually, maybe we'll arouse enough people. No, this isn't the motive. The motive, as God's children, we need to hone our discernment. See, when you're reading the Bible now, and then you read a secular article like this here, and this man has wrote this as a true journalist. And you're going to see what I mean by when we get to the end of the article. So anyway, for that, York, why don't you go ahead and start reading the article. Okay. This comes from the website, The Economical Collapse Blogspot. And um, the article is dated on May 11th, 2015. So that's already a little time ago. And uh, titled, In September, the UN launches a major sustainable development agenda for the entire planet. And by the way, the Earth is not a planet. <laughs> the UN plans to launch a, a brand new plan for managing the entire globe at the Sustainable Development Summit that will, will be hosting from September 25th to September 27th. Some of the biggest names are on the planet, including Probe Friend. Uh, on the planet, including Pope Francis, will be speaking at this summit. This new sustainable agenda focuses on climate change, of course, but it also specifically addresses topics such as economics, agriculture, education, and gender equality. For those wishing to expand the scope of global governance, sustainable development is the perfect umbrella because just about all human activity affects the environment in, uh, the environment in some way. The phrase, quote-unquote, for the good of the planet can be used as an excuse to micromanage virtually every aspect of our lives. So for those that are concerned about the growing power of the United Nations, this summit in September is something to keep an eye on. Never before have I seen such an effort to promote a UN summit on the environment, and this new sustainable development agenda is literally a framework for managing the entire globe. If you are not familiar with the Sustainable Development Agenda, this fo the following is what the official United Nations website says about it. Quote, The United Nations is now in the progress of defining sustainable development goals as part a new susti sustainable development agenda that must finish the job and leave no one behind. Leave no one behind behind, left behind. Didn't they make a whole series about this? You see how this Jesuitical casistry is working? <laughs> this agenda to be launched at the Sustainable Development Summit in September 2015 is currently being discussed at the UN General Assembly where member states and civil societies 
are making contributions to the agenda. The process of arriving at the post-2015 development agenda is member state-led with broad participation from major groups and other civil society stakeholders. There have been numerous inputs to the agenda, notably a set of sustainable development goals proposed by an open working group of the General Assembly, the report of an intergovernmental committee of experts on sustainable development financing, General Assembly dialogues on technology facilitation and many others. Posted below, or following in the reading now, are 17 sustainable development goals that are being proposed so far. Some of them seem quite reasonable. After all, who wouldn't want to end poverty? But as you go down this list, you soon come to realize that just about everything is involved in some way. In other words, this truly is a template for radically expanded global governance. Once again, this was taken directly from the official United Nations website. And when you go to that article, you can click there on and you will be led to the website, by the way. This is also part of uh, something that we always repeat until we are tired of it, that you always should do your own research. And when you have a document and that links to another document, then it is often very smart to look at the other document and maybe even other documents to get confirmation of that, what you've just read, that, that it's okay to go on with that. So therefore already I place this website that he puts the links in there and that you can easily do your own research on this point. But I'm going to continue now reading at least a few of the 17 sustainable development goals that they are posted here on the official United Nations website. And the first one, for, of course, sounds like everything in this paper probably very lovable. End poverty in all its forms everywhere. Comment. Yeah, please, Walt. I was awaiting that five minutes ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, LBJ, now I'm trying to think, it's War on Poverty. Uh, he started the War on Poverty. And so you have to ask the question, did, it, did the war on poverty, did poverty subside, or did it get greater? Did it get you know, worse? Well, yeah. you have a war on poverty, too? Yes, LBJ. You have, a, you, have a, you have a war on drugs. You have a war on terrorism. <laughs> what do you guys all have a war for? <laughs> well, I'll, I'll, that's a good subject. That's a good subject. In other words, they need war to move their agenda. Like World War One and World War Two, you know, they can move their agenda when they're under war because they can take the civil laws and to, to, like give you an example in this country. Uh, during war, they locked up all the Japanese people that had been born here. Some of the some of our best farmers, and they locked up Germans. And what's interesting, they put the Germans. There was a camp down in Texas where they locked up the Germans and the Japanese, and that camp was self-supporting. It was amazing. So I, I, I watched a, I watched a doc uh, I watched a document on this, uh, a government document. The Germans made furniture and made houses out of pallets, and 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 and, and of course the Germans are good farmers too. But the Japanese are excellent farmers. They're known for their farming. Man, I, I, I was raised in Washington in the Puyallup Valley, and they are tremendous farmers. But anyway, that's uh, in the, in poverty is, is, in other words, this is not going to end poverty. This is going to cause world, worldwide poverty. Sorry. Well, the problem is maybe not that it will not end poverty. The question is always, how is it ending poverty? Yeah. You know, you can also end poverty of one billion starving Indians by just st uh, stopping giving them anything to eat. Yeah. When you starve them to death, they are dead. And then it doesn't matter anymore that they are poor. No. And that's no. the agenda that they're doing all the time. I mean, look at Africa, what they did to the continent of Africa the last hundred years, or even longer than that. I mean, I live here in Belgium, and the, and the Belgian king, Leopold III, killed off 10 million, uh, six, six to 10 million or something, uh, something in that number. 
people in Zaire, Congo. Yeah? Yes. Okay, he ended poverty there. At what price? You know, these, these are just, I mean, everybody really has to, has to see this, and not only the people who are on this broadcast and listening and reading that for themselves. All these points here are just propaganda points, and they do not tell you how they will achieve that. They will not openly tell you that. It's exactly the same with Obama's slogan in 2008 of change. Don't you want change? Everybody wants change, right? Everybody wants at least a little change in his life. So that slogan took off and they got the change. Problem was nobody asked what change are we going to get and how it is going to be achieved. You know, the, the goals of these sustainable development goals in itself are good as stated in the article. But the problem is it's when you see, I mean, it is Satan who, who introduces these points. Satan will end poverty in all forms everywhere. And only when you know that it's actually Satan who offers this, then you have a chance to think about what he's probably going to mean and how he's going to do that because everybody knows, reads the Bible a little bit, that Satan hates man. Right? Right. Right. You have something to add there, Walt? I didn't want to take away your point because you were speaking, but I think that's, uh, that's something I wanted to get off my shoulders here. Yeah. Well, my comments is going to go into number two. Uh, and remember, these 17 points are are uh, are coming out of the United Nations, you know. And uh, yeah, like the externalization of the hierarchy, the ten satanic commandments. We made a broadcast on some time ago. Yeah. That also comes from the United Nations. The United Nations has a publishing company that's called Lucifer's Trust. That comes from Lucifer's Trust. Well. And it goes into the second one. When the second one is end hungry, achieve food security, and improve nutrition, and promote sustainable agriculture. And what that means is they're going to legalize GMOs over the whole world. You want to say a little bit about what, how the GMOs work there in Europe right now, York? Well, for for a big part here in Europe, GMOs are not allowed for the moment. They are allowed to feed cattle to feel. Uh, to feed uh, cattle and, and chicken and uh, animals like this in these factories that they have today, what they call farms, which is not a farm, but it's, uh, it's just a factory to produce meat, you know. And uh, so for, for, uh, for the animals, it's allowed to import like uh, GMO corn and GMO soy to feed that to the animals but is not allowed uh, for humans. And if uh, something is genetically modified, then it has to be labeled. And when you go organic, then it is out of the question. There's no GMO coming for that. And I noticed the last years here in Belgium, we have a little bit uh, a, a movement of CSA, Community Sustained Agriculture. That is when you're living in a village, and around that village there's one or two farmers who have uh, uh, an organic, by that I meant bio biological, huh? I said biological, huh? I, I meant organic, huh? organic right. stores, and who, who has an organic farm, yeah, sorry, I mixed up the words, um, who has an organic farm and maybe gives an acre or two, three free for that. And there he will grow things, and you pay a contribution, a uh, sum of money, once a year of about, I don't know, let's say $300. And for $300, you can come all year and uh, get yourself what you want. You don't have to sow it, but you can harvest it. You go there, you harvest it, and then you go home, and then you produce your food, uh, and then you, then you make your food yourself. So this CSA is, is growing uh, at a rapid rate. 
the last years over here in Belgium, I have the in, uh, I have the feeling from from looking at it, and that is because people are a little bit um, aware of these facts and they want to be self uh, they want to be self sustaining, you know. And it doesn't mean that when you are part of the CIA, CSA that you are self sustaining. But the problem is the, the 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 problems are getting worse and worse with Monsanto. Yeah, and it's, what what Walt actually was talking about in, in this regard is uh, why does it open the pots to Monsanto? Well, when you have a look at Ukraine, uh, some time ago in Ukraine, the son of uh, Joseph Biden, the vice president of the United States, Hunter Biden, um, died. And he was working in the Ukraine on the Monsanto side to open that up. And Ukraine is the wheat, uh, how, how does I say that, uh, the wheat chamber, wheat the basket. wheat chamber, yeah, isn't that the wheat chamber? The, the wheat supermarket, you know, that's the, it's the... Yeah, not, not supermarket, but the place where they grow the most, you yes, know? Yes, so that's, it's, the, it's, that's the wheat chamber, isn't it? Well, yes, uh, it's... It's, it's, it, you would call it the the bread basket. Yeah, the uh, bread uh, basket. Exactly. Bread, yeah. You know. Yeah. And and that goes right into the, the bread basket of Europe. And when they have that, of course, when they can install their GMOs over there, Ukraine is not part of the EU, you know. But with all this quarrel, all this war that is going on there, Ukraine wants to join the EU. Now, when in Ukraine already Monsanto is 100% established, then there is no turning back. And then this whole bread basket of Europe lives under the yoke of Monsanto, just joining the United Nations of Europe, the EU. And with that, it comes everywhere. And then we have here in Europe the same problem that you have over there in America, where GMOs aren't even labeled, and in a normal store you cannot get anything that is even uh, without any GMO. Yeah. And of course, when you control the food, and you control the money, and you control the oil, and you control the spirit, then you got it all. And that uh, community farming has been practiced. It was practiced in the early 30s, and that's what caused um, the famine in the winter of 34 and 35 there in the Ukraine. Because uh, oh, that was because Stalin stole all the wheat. Yes, yes, and, but also community. And let the people starve. Then afterwards, I mean, they had no chance at that time. They had. To, they had to. They had community far. It was a, it was com, it was a collectivism, and they had to everybody. Yeah, had they have the same. They have the same today in Russia. When I want to interrupt you here, yeah, they have the same today in Russia. Russia is uh, the country with the the biggest self sustainable population all, all over the world. Yes. Yes. Well, in three and four is ensure healthy lives and promote well-being for all at all ages. And also, uh, York, uh, that's what, what's that going to do to uh, to the orga organic farmers? Well, that will be not only pushed out, but in the end, they will be forbidden. <clears throat> they will be fixed. It's like at, at, at this moment, at this moment in the European Union, we have 15,000 different herbs, healing herbs, that are forbidden to grow. And you probably have the same over there in the United States of America. It's just a question of, inform of informing yourself about that. But I'm sure you have the same thing. You know, it's like, think about this, this whole drug debate, uh, not because of the war of drugs, but because of the legalization all over the United States of America the last years of cannabis. You know that the United States, the United States Declaration of Independence, was written on cannabis. Right? Did you know that? Yes. 
Well, yeah. in other words, the e- making a cannabis a hemp, they, uh, in other words, two kinds of hemp, but uh, the commercial hemp that they used. Uh, That's just so much that you can use of that plant, Walt. Yes, yes. And because, and because you're going to use something of cannabis doesn't actually mean that you have to get high. You don't have, have no. the stuff. THC that gives this feeling of highness that doesn't have to do anything with it. But well, cannabis is a much better, or marijuana or whatever you want to call it, is a much better plant than, for example, the cellulose, uh, cellulose paper making that we are doing uh, by just um, using trees. Yes, you know? It, yes, it was 1936 that they, that you see, who, who was behind making uh, uh, hemp illegal was. Um, the synthet- the people that were pr- producing synthetic, like the Dupont. You mm-hmm. see, in other words, um, Dupont. Yeah, Dupont. Dupont. In other words, uh, clothes made with uh, with hemp last, you know, uh, much longer than cotton. much much longer. And uh, it's a, it's an easy crop to grow too. It's not uh, uh, bothered by insecticides and such. And, and, uh, and but the, the main reason they they made e- hemp illegal it a- they actually by e- making it illegal they they uh, uh, they uh, in other words they they drove it out of business they, they they got rid of a whole business and during World War II when they needed more hemp uh, they they had to uh, get it from India. But uh, that's another whole that's another whole whole thing in in agriculture and and then and we're getting into something that that it, but it's very true. I mean, yeah, but hemp, my point being, hemp is a very value. valuable pro is a very was, was a very uh, uh, was when they 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 destroyed an industry a whole industry uh, by making it illegal. Let, let me come to the point of this world. My point being is that Monsanto already introduced GMO marijuana. Is that right? Yeah. 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 Didn't yeah. you know that? that? That was my whole point that I was going to, you know? Yeah. You have this legalization of cannabis now all over the United States of America, all of a sudden, and all of a sudden, Monsanto comes out with, hey, look, we have GMO marijuana. Yeah. And, and that's, that's, the same, I, that's the same thing they are doing with the Ukraine. Yeah. And because we are reading here point uh, number four, and before that number three, uh, number three and number number two, those points are really important in, uh, to see in that view. Because when you have this war on the Ukraine over there, and Monsanto trying to take the whole production of agricultural production of the Ukraine, taking it completely over, and then afterwards they come into the U, uh, in the EU. This is the second horse Monsanto has. And the first horse is the TPP, this uh, Trans-Pacific uh, Trade Agreement. Mm-hmm. It's exactly the same thing. It is open two doors, or try to open two doors. One will open, and then the other one you don't have to care for anymore. You either come through the front door or through the back door, but in you come. And that's what they're doing. And the most dangerous thing that you can do is take an article like this and read it and don't understand it. Yes. And that's because when you, just, when you just read the words of the statements over there, then afterwards, of course, you would fall, bow down on the floor and, and, and pray to God that these points all will be coming working, please. Yes, and the liberal minds, the liberal minds that they develop in this country with postmodernism, uh, in other words, when the Pope starts talking global warming and, and, the, and the, the climate encyclical, I mean, these, these, these are not card-carrying Catholics, but they're good Catholics. They will jump on this bandwagon. Because every one of these, like you say, ensure inclusive and, and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all. Boy, that sounds so, so good. But what kind of an education did they give us for the last 40 years? You know, Lifelong I, uh, learning opportunities for all. But they don't tell you how long your life is going to be. 
Is number five is achieve gender equality and empower all women and girls. Man, haven't we seen that the last 40, 50 years? They've destroyed, they've destroyed the women with the feminist movement. Oh, the and they people, destroyed the men along. And the men came along because behind every good man is a good woman. And, uh, and when, they destroyed, when they destroyed the woman with, with this new, new age thinking that, you know, you see, the, re- the reason why, the main reason why the new age has flourished in this country, because for, first of all, they discredited the, the, the Bible. But to boil it right down, you see, the new age movement they 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 are working. They are gods themselves. They are becoming God. That's because they follow what this uh, what the snake told Eve in the Garden of Eden. Yes, yes. Eat from the fruit, and your eyes will be opened. You can see uh, good and bad, and you will be as gods. And that's it's where that same promise that they all work for. It's, it's that same promise since the Garden of Eden. It is there from in the beginning, from almost in the beginning. You know, it's uh, and you can see that how they've been how they've been uh, doing this the last forty, fifty years. That's why we have so much divorce in this country. It's yeah, because, we're, we're and, and not, 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 not only not only in this country. Yeah, in uh, I mean this this has affected the whole world, you know. But uh, you know, I'm going to read number six is ensure availability and sustainable management of water and sanitation for all. Here they go into the environment now. They're going to control every aspect. They they want control and nothing, and that's why the TPP treaty. We this is a real historical event that's happening before Americans. As people, Americans over here are starting to buy their fireworks for the 4th of July. I mean, this country, officially, when this, when this treaty is all done, we have lost our sovereignty, see, and ensure access to affordable, reliable, sustainable, and modern energy for all. Promote sustained, inclusive, and sustainable economic growth, full and productive Productive employment and decent work for all. Boy, this all sounds good, doesn't it? Build <clears throat> resilient it? infrastructure. Build resilient infrastructure. Promote inclusive and sustainable industrialization and foster innovation. Yes. And reduce inequality within and among countries. Make cities and human settlements inclusive, safe, resilient, and sustainable. And ensure what does that what does that mean? Make cities and human settlements inclusive. What does that mean? Inclusive. I, I, it's it's what you just explained. What's going on in Belgium with the, with the community farming? That's part. That's part of what that what that means. I mean, see, they want control of everything. They want, they don't want anybody. It's going right back. This is nothing new about this. This is the, they're taking us back to the dark ages. They don't yeah, make want, cities and settlements exclusive, I would say, uh, ex- excluded. Make them shut off of everything else. Like uh, you have big cities and shove everybody in there. That's yes. the way it sounds to me. Yes, and that's, that's, that's it and ensure sustainable consumption and production patterns. You know, they're going to control all the, 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 the food chain, you know. And, and, and of course, you know, uh, we come to point 13, you know, the Kabbalistic number 13. Yeah. Listen, yeah. take urgent action to combat climate change and its impact taking note of agreements made by the UNFCCC forum. Point number 13. The encyclical Pope Francis is going to introduce at the United Nations meeting in September 25th to 27th. Point 
13. Take urgent action to combat climate change and its impacts. I mean, is it even, is it even needed that we go on after this point? <laughs> hmm. I mean, that said it all, huh? It, 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 you, you, and you're right. It takes, in other words, in other words, when, in other words, see there. That's why evolution was such a spearhead, and it was so important. Because what you're seeing here is 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 the religion of evolution, where God has completely been taken out of it, out of their thinking. <clears throat> and 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 of course. When the new age, we've all we've been hammered with the word new age. It's really not the new age. It's just the old age. There's nothing new about the new age religion. Uh, it's the old age and new clothes. Yes, it just it, that and, and that and that's that's right. You know, pr- you know, promote peaceful and exclusive societies for sustainable development. Provide access to justice for all and build effective accountability and exclusive institutions at all levels. And what, what, is, what this is saying, this is saying total control. Uh, you forgot I mean, a few points. Yeah, yeah. I, oh, yeah, we, we went over there. You know, yeah, I, I, I continue in point 14, but uh, first say what you have to say, Walt. Well, it's, go, go, go ahead and, and start with 14 there. If it's, okay, conserve and sustainability uh, and st- sustainably use the oceans, seas, and marine resources for sustainable development. Yeah. Number 15, protect, restore, and promote sustainable use of terrestrial ecosystems. Do we have other ecosystems than terrestrial? <laughs> sustainably manage forests. Combat desertification and halt and reverse land degradation and halt biodiversity loss. And, and this is already into effect. I live in this little town, Abandon, Oregon, and we have a we have the Coquille River that comes and empties at Abandon. So we have the Coquille Valley. They want to take the whole valley. And matter of fact, this laws on the book. See, Agenda 21 is in full bloom in Oregon, and it's it's in full bloom many places in the country. But it's already written in law that the farmers, when they die, they can't give the land to their children. It's going to go back to nature. It's going to be a, they call them wetlands. You know, and uh, and this and this. Uh, this that this encyclical on 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 climate rolls over in all facets of society. Not that's just a buzzword to get in the door. You know what these seventeen points really are, Walt, that we are talking about here. These 17 points, this whole agenda of global warming, what we are talking about, is just the way they get to the first commandment of the Ten Commandments they wrote on the Georgia Guidestones. Keep and maintain humanity under 500 million. And all the steps mentioned here are the steps into that world, because that is their dream world. That is exactly. These 17, I, I read... I got it right here two two winters ago. I read the execution by hunger, the hidden Holocaust, where seven million people in the breadbasket of Europe were deliberately starved to death of Stalin's command. This story has been suppressed for a half a century. Now a survivor speaks. Can't pronounce his name, but uh, Marion Dolat uh, doesn't matter. But. Uh, what, what these 17 points are talking about are going to lead to this world famine. Because what it does, it was proven in, 30, in 1934 and 35 of the winter. You see, it, it took four years for them to build up. There's 7 million people starved to death in that winter of 34 and 35 in the Ukraine. 
but it, it, it took four years because see what happens with this kind of farming is the production goes down where they had to give up their own animals. So what happens in, as time goes on, the animals are not replaced. They're not taken care of. But a farmer that, that has, his, has his free will and has his liberty, that's what built this country, the United States, why it was so productive. Thing people have said about this country, the United States, they they like to say we are. Look at we we consume eighty percent of this and ninety percent of this. But I want to say, you know, of all the ills of America, I've been back and across, of course, back and forth across this United States, and I rode on roundups with real, real cowboys, and I've known real farmers, and this country produced. I can take you across North Dakota and you'll see rock, piles of rock. Immigrants came over here, Germans. And 50% of the, our country has German descent One in, in, in the line. But it was, European, it was the European work ethic that built this country because they got over here like in North Dakota there when I went across there, they didn't have bulldozers. They went out there with their family and picked up those rocks and put them in piles. And, and you, you see, when you live in a, in, in, in a, in a country of, uh, that, 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 that free markets there, it gives incentive. So, when they when they harvested five acres and they made and they they said well listen if we do ten next year we can make twice as much money and so they did that's what built this country that's why our supermarkets are full of food I'm gonna tell you something it isn't that way in Russia even today it's not that way in Russia today they don't have the 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 over bulging supermarket but now they've now with as as time has gone on they've filled the shelves with with uh, with uh, what I call just junk food but but this is this is the thing these 17 points here will do exactly what York said they will they will fulfill they will cause a worldwide famine and I was just listening today to a, I can't give you the link, but do some research on this TP, TPP. And I heard, I heard Obama talking, and I'm telling you, I'm telling you, it's chilling. It's, and, it, and listen, I am not one, I am not one to put my head in the sand, but the Bible, like Ed said, when I went to the farmer's market yesterday, day before yesterday, it's going to happen. It's been written. And we, as God, we have the Bible. And as time goes on, you can see right through these 17 points. And so when we get into the bottom half of this, we, you know, we, on the bottom half of this, what I what really struck me on this article is this is true journalism because this man is not writing this from a Protestant position or a Catholic position. He is he is he is writing what's going to happen in the next in September. Okay, Walt. Uh, let's continue. We have still point number seventeen to finish here. Strengthen the means of implementation and revitalize the global partnership for sustainable development. And I think it is really with a kind of a certainty that we can state that in all these 17 points, when 17 points, when you put them all together and when you got a little understanding of the things that are going on, you see that this is leading into the new world order. You see that this is leading into absolute population control. And you can control the population when you control their money. And their, and their food, and their water. Never forget the water, because without water, you know you can live a month without eating, but you can't live a week without water. It's very important. And 
don't forget, you have the droughts over there in California. I don't know what it is over there in Oregon. But uh, people should really look out for that they at least have enough water in their home. I always have uh, a few gallons in the cellar for that. I, for a few days, I couldn't get to water anyway. That's, that's something important that I do. For the rest, I don't stack up anything because I'm waiting for another kingdom to go there too. <laughs> but uh, you should have enough water at your home. But you see, when 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 you see all these 17 points that we were just speaking about, this is really, to me, uh, this, the next steps that they have to set to fulfill the first commandment of the new commandments of the Georgia Guidestones, where it says, uh, keep humanity under 500 million, and therefore we have to lose 6.5 billion. And that is in the true light of the Luciferian doctrine, because this is all going into... Satan's paradise, let's call it. As you can see, the list goes far beyond saving the environment or fighting climate change. It truly covers just about every realm of human activity. Another thing that makes this new sustainable development agenda different is the unprecedented support that it is getting from the Vatican and from Pope Francis himself. Comment. It's a comment. Please. Is, is the reason... You see, this shows you this 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 shows you what true journalism is. In other words, all of these alternative radio stations are not bringing this out. The importance of the visit of the Pope to the United Nations. You see, this again, this is true journalism. He's, he's actually he's actually said, you know, you see, in fact, Pope Francis is actually going to travel to the United Nations and give an address to kick it off. See, how many times are you hearing about the Jesuit Pope Francis from alternative media? We're not. So this is so, why this this is why this, this is so important. In this article, yeah. But that's almost half a year after we started reporting about that. Yes. Because we started that, as I remember, in November 2014. That's already half a year ago. And again, we, we, have, we have not been introduced. In other words, anybody that watches the nightly news and reading Time magazine and newspapers and, what, and such, you see, that is not journalism. Jur- true journalism is to lay- give you the facts and let you connect the dots. And by the way, that's what I've tried to do with my website, The Grand Design Exposed, in the recent book that I put together. It's a chilling book because I just put the pieces together and let you connect the dots. See, and this is, this is, this is what, 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 what struck me with this article because continue. He talks more about the Pope now. Okay, continue reading then. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, Pope Francis is actually going to travel to the UN and give an address to kick off the Sustainable Development Summit on September 25th. And then comes the announcement that Boner read, and we have that on audio, but it is read here in an article. So Boner said at that time, His Holiness Pope Francis will visit the UN on 25th of September 2015 and give an address to the UN General Assembly immediately ahead of the official opening of the UN Summit for the Adoption of the Post-2015 Development Agenda. So that's almost the words that he used. This Pope has been very open about his belief that climate change is one of the greatest dangers currently facing our world. Just a couple of weeks ago, he actually brought UN Secretary Ban Ki-moon to the Vatican to speak about climate change and sustainable development. Here's a summary of what happened. On April 28th, the Secretary General met with His Holiness Pope Francis at the Vatican and later addressed senior religious leaders along with the presidents of Italy and Ecuador, Nobel laureates and leading scientists on climate change and sustainable development. Amidst an unusually heavy rainstorm in Rome, participants at the historic meeting gathered within the ancient Vatican compound 
to discuss what the Secretary General has called the defining challenge of our time. The mere fact that a meeting took place between the religious and scientific communities on climate change was itself newsworthy. That it took place at the Vatican was hosted by the Pontifical Academies of Science and featured the Secretary General as keynote speaker was all the more striking. In addition, Pope Francis is scheduled to release a major encyclical this summer, which will primarily focus on the environment and climate change. The following comes from the New York Times. Quote, the much-anticipated environmental encyclical that Pope Francis plans to issue this summer is already being translated into the new world's major languages from the Latin final draft, so there's no more tweaking to be done. Several people close to the process have told me in recent weeks, unquote. I think that we can get a good idea of the kind of language that we will see in this encyclical from another Vatican document which was recently released. It is entitled Climate Change and the Common Good, and it was produced by the Pontifical Academy of Sciences and the Pontifical Academy of Social Sciences. The following is a brief excerpt. Quote, unsustainable consumption coupled with a record human population and the uses of inappropriate technologies are casually linked with the destruction of the world's sustainability and resilience. Widening inequalities of wealth and income, the worldwide disruption of the physical climate system and the loss of millions of species that sustain life are the grossest manifestations of unsustainability. The continued extraction of coal, oil, and gas following the business-as-usual mode will soon create grave existential risks for the poorest three billion and for generations yet unborn. Climate change resulting largely from unsustainable consumption by about 15% of the world's population has become a dominant moral and ethical issue for society. There is still time to mitigate unmanageable climate changes and repair ecosystem damages, provided we reorient our attitude toward nature and thereby towards ourselves. Climate change is a global problem whose solution will depend on our stepping beyond national affiliations and coming together for the common good. Such transformational changes in attitudes would help foster the necessary institutional reforms and technological innovations for providing the energy sources that have measurable effect on global climate, atmospheric pollution and ecosystems, thus protect, protecting generations yet to be born. Religious institutions can and should take the lead in bringing out that change in attitude towards creation. The Catholic Church, working with the leadership of other religions, can now take a decisive role by mobilizing public opinion and public funds to meet the energy needs of the poorest 3 billion people, thus allowing them to prepare for the challenges of unavoidable climate and ecosystem changes. Such a bold and humanitarian action by the world's religions acting in unison is certain to catalyze a public debate over how we can integrate societal choices as prioritized under UN Sustainable Development Goals into sustainable economic development pathways for the 21st century with projected population of 10 billion or more. End quote. And I comment of uh, this excerpt. This was, yeah, you can you can give a comment directly, Walt. But um, this, they don't see. The, he he writes this here about this all these different religions working together for this one goal, and he doesn't even think of that. That is making the path free for a one world religion. Now you can comment. Well, you know, what, what this, what this uh, when you read, and I read Romans, Romans chapter 1, where they worship the creation versus the creator, you know, uh, the only difference is now, 
the significance of this this is they are they giving you the their agenda and they want the whole world and with with the the passing of the TPP by the way it has it's passed the house but it hasn't passed the Senate but you know it's going to be a shoe in okay I mean they're getting ready for the boss to come over here but what significance to God's people God's children is when we read God's Word now I mean you know when you read when you read Romans I'm going to start with Romans 1 20 for the for the invisible things of him from the creation of this world are clear, clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his internal power and Godhead, so they are without excuse. Because that, when they knew God, they glorified him for God, neither were thankful nor because but became vain in their imagination, and their and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. We have, at this time in history, these fools are, are, are setting up their, their one world, their, their old, they're setting up their religion, which is evolution, and which is, and, and the Pope declares himself as God. You know, this, 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 this is, this is a, there's no other place that you can go, no other book you can read that, that explains exactly the motivation of these people. And they're doing it, they're doing it with deception and keeping people busy with their entertainment. And, and, uh, I just, uh, friend sent me a link the other day you know this is if this is Rome being reenacted that's why we have all this entertainment the bread and circuses this is exactly what's going on and you know and now and now and and you see now they don't need world this is a world they're declaring war on men Satan is declaring war on mankind because he's declaring he's God and he's going to he's going to save us from the weather save us from poverty you know and and uh, and also God, I don't have the bible verse in front of me but it, God it, the Messiah tells us this that it'll be like the days of Noah I mean, and boy, we're seeing this at a at a worldwide scale. And the thing of it is, I'm not bringing this up to, to, to install fear. We need discernment. See, we need to we need to see what they're doing, and stand fast, and don't don't let the dev- these these lies, these hordes of lies. When you listen, when you listen to Obama give a speech, or one of these politicians, or the Pope, it's just nothing but lies. You know. So that's that's my comment. But notice in this article, notice in this article, how how, how this man is reporting. He's showing he's showing us the major player. And it's not the Jews. You know, the Pope don't go to, to see the president of, of, of Israel. Pri- you know, no, they, all the leaders go to Rome and kiss that ring. It's it's it, in a, in it's it, and it's not. It's in, you know, it, and it's you know. So one in one respect. This is kind of uh, when you see the reality of this, you have to have the Word of God. You have to have the Word of God. If you are not standing on God's Word, if you do not believe that Bible, you are going to be swept away. Because all those 17 points that the United Nations has mentioned, 
It's, it's aimed at world dominance. And like I said, I just got off the phone with a brother, and he's, he's read the whole climate encyclical. And boy, I forget what he said. It's painstaking. I mean, you know, to, 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 to read it word for word. But it's, it's what's going on. So anyway, that's my comment, uh, Bjork. Okay, thanks. Uh, just going to finish a little bit when the article is done, then we can really talk about this, make a, summer up, uh, a summarization of it all. Under this pope, the Vatican has become much more political than it was before, and sustainable development has become the Vatican's number one political issue. And did you notice the language about, quote, unquote, the world's religions acting in unison? Unquote. So, okay, he at least uh, found that out. Clearly, the Vatican believes that it has the power to mobilize religious leaders all over the planet and have them work together to achieve the UN Sustainable Development Goals. I can never remember a time when the United Nations and the largest uh, religious institution on the planet, the Catholic Church, have worked together so closely. So what will the end result of, our, of all this be? Should we be concerned about this new sustainable development agenda? Please feel free to add to the discussion by posting a comment below. And here is where reality left this reporter or this journalist or whatever you want to call him. He doesn't connect the dots because he doesn't read the Bible. Otherwise, he would have... Uh, he's, he, he writes here... I can never remember a time when the United Nations and the largest religious institution on the planet, the Catholic Church, have worked together so closely. It was through the Vatican, through the Jesuits, that the United Nations were formed. When you do not know that real history, then of course you stand there like he does. That they're baffled. Don't be baffled. Study your history and then you know that the United Nations was founded by the Jesuits. It's nothing else than that. So, of course, in a way, the Catholic Church has been the founder of the United Nations. The Roman Catholic Church always have, has two methods to get you, whether spiritually or temporarily. And the United Nations was set up from the temporarily world. Right, Walt? The political side. Yeah, the, the political the, side. The, the, the political, and one thing, and in, in you stated... The, the civil power, you know, yes, the Pope has two keys for the civil yes. power and for the spiritual power. This is the civil power. And now comes the spiritual power, join with the temporal power when he comes over there in September and speaks in the United Nations, not for the first time, but for, a long, for since a long time, the first time again, and especially with this agenda that he carries around. Here you can really see that we are in the last days of our world as we know it, and then we will enter the new age which is the old age, we will enter the new world order, which is the old world order, which is the dark ages, which is, what is persecution, no freedom of conscience, no freedom of speech, no freedom of press, no freedom of anything anymore, and no access to anything anymore, except you totally comply to the system. And whenever you totally comply to this coming system, you will, in one form or another, have the mark of the beast of Revelation 13. I'm not prophesying that it is Sunday law. I'm not prophesying that it is an RFID chip. I don't prophesy that it is any combination of the two or maybe even other things. I tell you, when you enter the new world order, you will have the sign of uh, the mark of the beast on your forehead or in your right hand. Now is the time to stand up and protest. 
end. And not because we can stop this, because we cannot stop this. It's written that it's going to come. But because we want to wake other people up of these facts, people who are not aware of that. And you know, when Albert Pike wrote about the coming three world wars, in the Third World War, the prerogative was of the Hodgesian dialectic, the same thing. When they put the Muslims and the Jews and the, and, and the Christians, so-called Christians, the Catholics, everyone, all these three belief systems all together in World War Three, they will do this world war in a way that they all come out disillusioned. And by that afterwards, they will embrace the Luciferian doctrine. This is how Albert Pike wrote this. And Albert Pike was... Not like in a documentary that I saw today, the uh, mightiest Jesuit in his time. He was Jesuit controlled. He was the mightiest Freemason, but he was Jesuit controlled. And that's why he has these plans for the three world wars in 1871. That's more than 130, 140 years ago. That's how long they plan in advance, of course. How long did God plan in advance? God knew the end from the beginning, right? When he wrote the Bible. So does Satan. He knows he only has a short time. And now it's really coming up out in the open. And still I want to mention, because maybe you don't think of this right now, Walt, we talked about the Jubilee year. Now see this encyclical that he is bringing in September to the United Nations in combination with then the Jubilee year that will start on December 8th and end 30th of November next year. A year for forgiveness. A year where everybody's debts are forgiven. Like a Jubilee year is supposed to be so. Well, we just read 17 points that the Roman Catholic Church, so-called the United Nations, but the Roman Catholic Church will push to put in their agenda. And whether you are part of it or you're against it. Isn't that what George W. Bush, our friend from the intro of the uh, broadcast tonight, said? Whether you're with the terrorists or you're against us. And that jubilee year is there to sort it all out. And when that jubilee year is done, I think it is getting hot. You know, we are just all like boiled frogs, sitting in the pot of cold water, waiting for it to become warm, and don't even feel the moment that we get boiled alive. The boiling frog system. Well, do you have any comments on uh, the author and how he wrote that? and his views or not views. Yes, because, you know, I, I will say that what, what attracted me, see, the dots are there. The dots, he just doesn't connect the dots, but he does give the big dots. He, the whole half, the last half of this is on, on Pope Francis and the Vatican's, you know, I can never remember a time when the United States and the largest religious institution on the planet, the Catholic Church, have worked together so closely. And yes, and yes, you, you know, it, I, I shared earlier on my trip to the market there, but this is what Walt Stickle is going through after putting up a website called The Grand Design Exposed. And I've said this in the past, you know, I'm not connecting the dots. I don't, there's not, you can't say that I have dogma up there. But there's a lot of dots up there, and you have to connect the dots. And the, and the thing of it is, what's happened to me, after I came across Ronald Cook's book, you know, The Vatican Jesuit Global Conspiracy, I realize you know, that they've taken, I had a friend explain it to me like this. Everybody's heard about the holograms that they can, they can, 
and I've even actually seen a display with Al Gore once on Walter White's one of his broadcasts, one of his uh, lectures. He showed uh, Al Gore being holocaust hologrammed and speaking in Japan. But you know, I had a friend say this to me, and the, actually the the Pentagon came out and said this in a, in a statement. But they've hologrammed the mind. You see, they give us a, a world view with our education. And, uh, and they give us no history. And the reason I say this, and I used to say this, but now as time is coming on, especially after reading this article, anybody that sits down and reads this article realizes the Vatican's position and the power it has. You know, and, 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 and once, once you see this, history, if you don't, what this man left out of this is the word Jesuits. See, because it, it is simple as this. I want to say something, and it's really simple, and you have to think of what I'm saying. If you don't know about the Jesuits, if you just know the word Jesuit, or you've seen the word Jesuit, you don't have any history. And if you if you do, if you if you've studied history, and you don't have the word Jesuit in it, you don't know any history. That that is so important. And if you don't understand what I just said. You have to understand what a Jesuit's all about. I'm sitting here looking at a book that was printed in 1900. It's the history of the Jesuits in England. It's a yellow book. and The pages are yellow. There's hordes of books on the Jesuits. So, you see, what we see transpiring right now is the American people have got a hologram and the world and they're not living in reality. They're talking about who's, who's, who's going to win the, the World Series. Are they gonna, they're, I mean, they're, they're working two jobs, the wife and the husband, and they got a brand new car and a brand new house. And, and, you know, and they're just going, they're like a squirrel, <clears throat> like a hamster in a, in, a, in, a, in a wheel, just spinning, just sitting there tre- treading. Because it is important because if you do not know the, about a Jesuit and we have a Jesuit Pope coming to speak and to, a, to our, a joint session of Congress when the, when the house chaplain is a Jesuit and you have 28 Jesuit universities in this country, 50 Jesuit high schools, Got 240 Catholic universities, and the word university comes from Catholicism. When you and and I, I am speaking to you, brothers, because I if if you're seeing this like I am, you there's only one place to go to anchor back to. There isn't anything that's more evil than the Jesuit agenda and this article with the 17 points every one of those are Jesuitical you cannot write a history you cannot talk about what is happening today you know I heard a man talking about there's there's always a boogeyman yeah there is a boogeyman as God's children, we know who the boogeyman is. You see, it says the, you know, the whole world will be deceived. Now, anybody that's listening to me speaking has been deceived. But as time goes on, and when you start understanding history, you know, in prophecy, is history written in advance. 
And and so the last couple of weeks, I put this book together. And by the way, I, I if you send me your address, I'll give you two free books. It's published and hand-bound right here at the desk of, of Grand Design Exposed. And don't send any money. Because I realized after I put this book together that there's very few people, only God's children will read it. Because somebody that doesn't have God's word, it's, 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 what's the word? It's, it's blind. They're, they're blind and they get scared. When you really see what, a, was, what is about to come down, and when you, like this brother that just told me, he has read the whole climate encyclical. I'm telling you something. He knows what's in that encyclical. And, and, I, and, and I don't, I, and I, he read a part of it this morning to me. And believe me, this climate encyclical and global warming, they've been, they, the Jesuits, worked 40, 50 to 100 years out. They've been debating this and this global warming because global warming is nothing but a fraud. It's the same thing as the papacy. It's a fraud. It's organized crime. And God has instructed us to know who our adversary is. He told us clearly in the book who his son is and who our savior is. And he didn't go through less effort to tell us who our adversary is. And that's it like it like I, I have been printing. If you give if you send me your name and address, I'll send you two books. And one of them is J. A. Wiley's book, The Papacy is the Antichrist, a demonstration. And you know, I purchased a book online on that same book. This is very interesting about connecting dots. The book I have in my hand that I, 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 I bought it so I could edit the book, make sure that punctuation it was right. But the book that they're publishing and, and putting out is called The, the Papacy, J.A. Wiley. The original book by J.A. Wiley was called The Papacy is the Antichrist, a demonstration. And I'm telling you, you can pick up this book. It's got 17 chapters, and I haven't sat down and read it from cover to cover. I've read the first five chapters, but you know, and I've edited. It. But I don't care where you open the book, and I've, I've 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 read excerpts all over the book. It is it is amazing how clear that J. A. Wiley makes it. You cannot. You cannot miss it. If this was in a court of law and J. E. Wiley was coming up to present his case and he presented all 17 chapters to a jury, it would be unanimous. The papacy is the Antichrist. It's like Romanism and the Reformation by Henry Gretton Guinness. Yes. Yes. That was an eye-opening book for all of us, I think, when Tom read that on Inquisition Update. It, will, it was the most... I've, I heard Tom Fress read many, many books. But that one rocked my boat. And mine too. And it rocked Tom's boat also. And I'd like to deliver the gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news, by Henry Grattan Guinness. Now this is found in his book, Romanism and the Reformation. It's the conclusion of nine lectures. And it's the last paragraph in his book. And he delivers the gospel. Let me read it to you. Remember that there is only one mediator between God and man, that there is but one sacrifice for sins offered once for all and forever through the one mediator. By the one sacrifice, draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. 
you need no mediator between yourself and Christ. The priest is a false intruder there. Jesus calls you to come to himself. He is both human and divine. He is bone of your bone and flesh of your flesh. Yet without sin, God is in him. He is, he is one with us and one with God. Suffer nothing to come between your soul and him. Suffer no saint, no angel, no virgin, no priest to come between you and Jesus Christ. Go to him for the pardon of all your sins. Make to him your confessions. He can absolve you, and he will. Yea, does if yea, does if you truly believe in him. Priestly absolution is a lie. It is a blasphemous pretense. The sentence, I absolve thee, whether from the mouth of a Roman priest or a Protestant minister, is profane. Be not deluded by it. Your, your fellow sinner cannot absolve you from the sins you have committed against God. Turn from these idols and vanities. Jesus is all you need. His blood is sufficient to atone and cleanse those who simply trust in him from all sins. Search the scriptures. They testify of him. Come to him that you may have life. His heart is touched with the feeling of our infirmities. None can sympathize as he can. None can help us as he. To you, to each one, he says, him that cometh unto me, I will in no wise cast out. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. Thou alone art all we need, for thou alone art all in all. Henry Grattan Guinness in 1888. And you know, you know this, and to th and to think that uh, to think that. Uh, that we have one billion point two and throw in another one billion evangelicals, you know, you know, that are that are submitting to this man of sin. And that's what's happening. That's what's happening now in September with the passing of the TPP. No sense crying over spilled milk. God said it, it, it has been written. There will be a world government. And what's happened and transpired this last week is evident of it. It's a fulfillment of what is ahead. And how it's going to come down, we, we can only, you know, but it's going to be interesting as God's children because we're not deceived. And this is not coming down because of us. It's, because, it's coming down because of the goats. There's sheep and goats in this world. And only eight got on the boat. Christ tells us that it'll be like the days of Noah. And one thing, what this last couple weeks has done for me where Where is your heart anchored? And one other thing I want to say about that gospel that Henry Grattan Guinness delivered. I was going to do a, a broadcast or even put it up on the web. But there's over, I, I, I got over, I, I went through his, his deliverance of the gospel there. He used over 25 scriptures. By the way, that's on the inside leaf of J.A. Wiley's book. And it's in the inside leaf of uh, of the Jesuits, of the of the Vatican Jesuit global conspiracy. That page, that page is the anchor. That's the lifeboat. That's that's our lifeline to hang on to. It's nothing that man has given us. It's what Christ has given us. And it's and it's 
and it's it's been fulfilled the perfect sacrifice and we don't need a priest that's my comments you know when the pope comes over in september and he speaks there on behalf of the american people what he actually does is he spits in the face of every protestant And I think we made that very clear, not only today with things that you said, but also with our broadcasts we did on the Catholic Lutheran Accord, in the time when we were analyzing the paper from Richard Bennett that he wrote on the Catholic Lutheran Accord. Mm-hmm. We're now at the end of the ecumenical movement. The evangelicals formed an alliance with the Roman Catholic Church. And uh, then we discussed this video from Kenneth Copeland, where Bishop Palmer said that protest is over. This is exactly what the Pope will express when he speaks on behalf of the American people in September 2015. Because it is true. When the Antichrist of the Bible is allowed to speak in a protestant country for the lawmakers and the lawgivers of that country, then you have a lamb speaking as a dragon and you have history fulfilled or prophecy fulfilled before your very eyes. What more proof do you need that the United States of America is totally Catholic controlled? And how can you self call yourself a protestant when your whole country is Catholic controlled and you don't give a rat behind. It's reality. Yeah, but you also have to do something. You have to do something to get the word out, to wake people yeah. up. Everybody who is woken up has, I think, the obligation to wake other people up. And uh, if it only was by sharing this broadcast, you know, just sending someone an internet link and say, hey, listen to this for once. And maybe you can see some things in a way that you haven't seen them before. And that can help you understand things better. Mm-hmm. Walt says that he has a website where he doesn't connect the dots. No, that's right, but he puts all the puzzle pieces out there. When you go to granddesignexposed.com, you find every information imaginable on the New World Order and the Old World Order and the Jesuits and the founding of the United States of America, what it was really all about. And I think this is a good idea to close the program down, Walt. We have been busy for an hour and a half, and I want to thank you very much for your contribution and everything that you said on the show. It was wonderful. I enjoyed it very much, and I want very much to look, out, uh, look forward to our next broadcast that we will probably have on Thursday. And yes. so I thank yes. you for your contribution and setting up the call. And to our listeners, thank you for listening and watching the video. And until the next time, God bless you and bye-bye.